Enjoy, share and dance with friends with a live sabar. Wow kany, nyolen yumbara hembara he, jahagun def bem sab. Then you follow join officers men. Date 19th of May 2013 and time 1 p.m. on till you wanna go home. Tickets are just 75 dollars each. Rek damane pull up for Kenya. The biggest inter-school school party immediately after the exam. You've heard it. It's the inter-school passing out pool party of the year. Tickets, 75 the last days. Venue, joint officers mess. Go to be there or be nowhere. The money. Our job so ote na yep tell. to the interview and tonight courtesy of DHL I am happy to say that I've got a legend with me on the interview Quentin Fortune of Manchester United still at Manchester United although he's retired but he still trains at Carrington mm -hmm. Quentin welcome to the interview thank you very much well I'm sure all Manchester United supporters and fans in the Gambia will be delighted to see you talk to me on the show. But first of all, let's get back to the early days. You moved from South Africa at a very tender age, 14, mm -hmm. and then got into the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us how life was with you and the game that you decided to spend your entire life in? Well, um, I left South Africa at, uh, in 91. Things were just changing. Uh, our big chief was just about to come out of out of prison, so um, uh, a lot of things were happening in South Africa. I was playing for my provincial team from Cape Town, and uh, I was selected for the first multiracial team. Obviously, you guys know the history of our country about the apartheid, and it's the first time I had a white coach. And uh, the gentleman there, uh, after after we played uh, uh, the provincial and our national tournament, um, he asked me if I would like to go to to Tottenham to England, and uh, of course, like any other kid. I used to watch English football on TV and uh, I said yes and he had to get permission from my mum and dad. Um, he came to speak to my parents. My, uh, my mum said fine but my dad didn't want me to leave um, so I had to wait a few weeks and uh, eventually my dad decided that it's okay for me to go and uh, they had to sign guardianship over to this gentleman who took me over to England and that's how it came about. Um, I went to Tottenham for, for two weeks and signed for Four, four years, five years at Tottenham, and uh, moved over from South Africa, um, and it was I was I was hard leaving leaving because I'm the I'm the youngest in the family. I got five brothers, I'm f four brothers and one sister, and uh, leaving them and leaving my culture, the food, the weather, everything behind, and going to um, to England. Of course, it was I was excited, but also on the other side, I was missing my mom and dad. But um, I was. I was just crazy about the game of football and uh, to, to have this opportunity, I had to take it as quick as possible and um, that's how it all came about. You came from one of the best places to me in South Africa. Thank you. Cape Town. Cape Town. <laughs> Wonderful place. I love Cape Town. Thank you. You never played for the Tottenham senior team? No. Um, I was just about to sign a professional contract with uh, the senior team until uh, my, the gentleman, my agent at that time, he uh, wanted me to leave and uh, unfortunately I left Tottenham just before I had to sign uh, with the first team. Um, I was disappointed because I grew up there, I wanted to stay there, but because of uh, a few other stuff I had to leave unfortunately. And I came back to South Africa for one year. Um, I trained there for one year, kept myself fit and the opportunity came to go to, to, to Spain, Atletico Madrid. And, um, it was an opportunity to play football, professional football, and that was how, what I was preparing myself for uh, the while I was at Tottenham. And, um, and I eventually signed in Spain for Atletico Madrid and uh, spent five years there, five great years, and uh, learned a lot in Spain. Did you play for Mallorca? I went out to Mallorca as soon as I signed for Atletico Madrid. They loaned me out to Mallorca for six months, 
And after six months, I returned to, to the uh, Atletico and uh, stayed there, played in the B, played a few games in the first team and uh, kind of slowed down my progress. But because, um, uh, like I said before, uh, the education as a, as a young football player in, in England and that everything to change, learn a new language, learn Spanish, uh, learn a new style of football. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for that because uh, I played with some great players and I played against some great teams as well. So uh, it was a great education for me in, in terms of football as a human being, learning so many things over there in, in different life, different lifestyle, different football style. And uh, my, my dream is always to, to, to return to England because that's where I started my, my football education. You must be multilingual. You must speak Spanish, yeah, I Afrikaans. Yeah, Spanish. Afri Afrikaans my first language. And English. And English. And uh, hopefully a little bit of French in the future. All right. How did the spotlight came on you to be realized by Manchester United? And of course, this time around, we're talking about the most successful coach on the planet, Sir Alex. Mm -hmm. How did Sir Alex figure you out? Um, I, I think when I came to Tottenham at 14, there was a lot of hype in the papers there, in the, in the Sun newspaper. Um, I remember there was once a write-up about uh, the first million pound kid, um, and it was front page of the Sun. And I just signed for Tottenham, and um, I was a, a surprise to everyone else, but that was the hype around it. And uh, Steve McLaren, at that time when I signed, knew about me, so I probably played against one of his teams in the past. And uh, as soon as I arrived at United, he spoke well of me and said, you know, he's, he's seen me play a few times. And I wasn't sure if the manager knew. I'm sure the manager had people watching me, and, uh, and that's how it all came about. He, for, for some reason, um, they got some mystery about me and Teddy, Teddy Sheringham at that time. Uh, I knew him from my Tottenham days as well because when I was a schoolboy at Tottenham, he was in the, in the first team. So he also spoke uh, nice words about me and then uh, obviously it, it doesn't help. Uh, uh, he still had to go and perform and play well and I had to go and do that. And as soon as they, they saw me play, then they signed me for five years. That's with Manchester United? With Manchester United. Beginning 1999? Just after they won the treble. Okay. And uh, finished at 2006-2005. Uh, they call Old Trafford the theatre of dreams. What was it like to you mm. to be playing at Old Trafford, especially when you have your own matches? <sighs> it's, uh, it's more than words can describe. I mean, it's... It's what you dream of is what, uh, you know, my first, my first real uh, about understanding the game was, was Italy 1990 when I was at home in South Africa and I watched uh, the opening game against Argentina and, and, and Cameroon and that's when I really like watched football and understood what was going on. And you dream of these things, you, you, this imagination dwell, you, you, goes everywhere and you pretend to be Maradona, Pelé and all these great players. And um, I remember when I was five years old, my dad told me about a great player, Manchester United player, George Best. And we just, uh, he took me to the, to the movies and we watched the movie called Escape to Victory. And then all the Sylvester Stallone, uh, Bobby Moore, Pelé in it and everyone. And I, and I didn't understand why my dad was telling me about George Best because I didn't know I was, I was five years old. And it came to understand years later that George Best was the ultimate Manchester United player, one of the greatest players uh, the world's ever seen. And uh, to play on the same pitch that my dad, uh, the club that my dad supported, and George Best played there, uh, Bobby Charlton, all these great players, Roy Keane, and you can get so many, Duncan uh, Ferguson, Ferguson. And, um, so Matt Busby had his, his team there, and I mean, uh, Paddy Cray, and so many great players. And to be on the same pitch as them is beyond what I could ever have imagined. Um, when I made my debut for Manchester United, my parents have never seen me play football, never seen me play live. And the day I, I made my debut, I flew them over from Cape Town and they were there to witness it. So um, it's like for, for, for young, to describe it for young people today, it's like one moment you're playing on the PlayStation mm -hmm. and the next moment it, is, it becomes real, it's reality. It's um, amazing. It's amazing. Your teammates at that time? Mm -hmm. You had the Neville brothers. Yeah. You had Nicky Butt. Uh, Giggs was there. Yeah. Scholes. Scholes. Scholeskaya. Beckham. Yeah. Beckham. Beckham. Yeah. How right. was it like to gel with it within that cream of talented players? It was. Uh, it was unbelievable because, like I said to you, I mean, 
when I arrived at Tottenham in 90, 